Hi, this is Gary Sandemann. I'm, I'm in New York. Uh, we first met Brian June a little bit over a year ago when we decided to participate in the Tezos ICO. Um, Brian was spearheading um, that endeavor, basically. Um, a group of us investors decided to jump in, take the plunge in the cryptocurrency world. That was our introduction. And since that time, in on a number of other opportunities, uh, occasions that is, we've had reason to wire Brian um, a lot of money, tens of thousands of dollars. Not, not once did, you know, did he ever give us any cause to worry. And that's basically because Brian is a man, uh, he's proven himself to be a man of his word. Um, he says what he's going to do and he does what he says. Um, so over the course of that year, what I've discovered about Brian is that he's a man of integrity. Um, he under promises and he over delivers. So if you have any reason to do business with Brian, if you want to do a trade, then by all means, I strongly encourage you to do, uh, to do the trade, to do business with Brian. This is a solid individual. I wholeheartedly trust him. I wholeheartedly recommend him. And I would recommend him to anyone. And I, you know, I give this recommendation, uh, you know, um, freely and, and happily. He's a good man. So definitely do business with him. Okay? All right. Hi, everyone. Brian June and Jovan Smith with you here today. It is the Labor Day weekend, 2018. We hope you're all enjoying this weekend. And while you're having fun, eating hot dogs, throwing a steak on the grill, maybe grilling up some chicken, or maybe just at the beach, <laughs> Jovan and I are here working for you. So today, we're going to talk about OTC trading in general and Tezos in particular. So we're not exactly sure when we're going to put this video up live. It might be Tuesday the 4th before this actually goes live, but we're actually recording this on, um, what is the day today? Uh, two, uh, it's yeah, the 2nd. 2nd of September. We're recording on the 2nd. Cool. So you all know Jovi, and I'm going to turn it on over to him in a minute. And Jovi is uh, our new education director at iBuyTezos, but he's doing a lot more than that. He's really been focusing on he's helping people set up nodes and uh, he's helping people set up wallets so guys if you need to have a wallet set up hit up hit jovi up okay he's going to help you set that wallet up if you want to know uh how to set up your own node also hit jovi up that's quite a bit more involved but we want you to know we're here from for we are here for you and so with that jovi what's happening what's what's going on Nothing much. Thanks for thanks for uh, the introduction. How's everybody doing? Um, I hope uh, everybody's enjoying the weekend and happy holiday to you guys. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, what I've been doing on my side for iBuy Tezos, as uh, Brian pointed out, I am the uh, educational outreach director, and so basically, it's uh, my job to uh, not only kind of you know market iBuyTezos.com, right, but to also help people set up these uh, set up wallets and. Because unique, uh, or well, Tezos has a very unique consensus mechanism uh, that doesn't require mining rigs and all this other stuff. It just requires a stake of Tezos. Uh, a lot more of our customers are becoming um, uh, curious about about delegation and things like that, and so they want to run their own nodes. They they uh, most of them know about dele about delegation. They can maybe delegate from a wallet, but it's really starting to people are really starting to become more aware that you know you can even self delegate. And you don't have to necessarily, um, you know, give out your rewards. You can keep everything for yourself. And so with higher players, people that have 500,000 Tez, why, why necessarily delegate that? And so that's becoming more apparent. A lot, of, a lot more people want to know about um, how to run their own node. To the yeah, so there you have it, folks. Jovi's really working on that. And we invite you uh, to hit him up. We'll make sure that his uh, direct 
contact information is below the video once the video is uh, goes live. And, and also, Jovi's been doing a lot of research. He's been actually researching this for two or three weeks on OTC trading. And um, so I've asked Jovi to talk to you guys today about OTC trading. And I could give you my perspective, but frankly, I'm pretty entrenched in it. So uh, I thought I'd have Jovi speak to it because he's coming at it from a fresh perspective. Uh, and I thought, it, Joey, you want to share your thoughts with uh, with everyone on the OTC trading? It just depends on who you are, what kind of player you are. So, in any in any trading environment, any market environment, you have uh, buyers and sellers. There's a caveat there, though. There's wells who tend to be institutional investors and and high net worth individuals. They require certain things before making trades, and then you have smaller players, right? So it's, it's relative. It just depends on who you are. For larger individuals, they prefer to use an OTC uh, trading desk because, number one, uh, they can get a better price because they're not moving the market as much. They're not moving the price against themselves once their trade hits the order book. Number two, it's faster and secure. It's more secure because most of the transactions happen from, uh, you know, on the blockchain itself. And uh, number three, because they are institutions, hence the word institution, they must follow certain compliance guidelines, okay? And so they prefer organizations that um, have already, that have done KYC in advance. I buy Tezos most definitely facilitates that need for those folks as well. I um, yeah. Well, can I ask a clarification question maybe? You yeah. said they're gonna get a better price. If they're paying a bigger spread, how are they gonna get a better price? Well, because what, what can happen, in, in a in, in in the exchange is once somebody say they want to say they want to buy two hundred thousand tes for example okay once that hits the order book at a dollar forty right everybody can see that mm -hmm. and so now it can start to dynamically change both on the buy and sell side right as the as the order comes up the order book so what just became what was a dollar forty is now close to a dollar seventy maybe even could push two bucks well at an OTC trade desk somebody who wants to buy 200,000 can just lock it in at that price mm. at, what, at the price that they agree upon. And they don't have to worry about the price dynamically changing on them. Therefore, let me advise a measure of caution and let you heed. Okay. All right, cool. I got it. The institutions and the people trading size uh, makes a lot of sense for them to use an OTC trade desk. How about uh, any, who else does it make sense for? Well, it just uh, so it, it depends on what what you got going on. For somebody who needs, so like say like a Tezos ICO investor, right? They want to buy. They need to pay a bill or something like that, right? And so they need cash today. OTC can provide. Well, iBuyTezos.com, right? Can provide the liquidity from crypto to USD that they're looking for within one to two hours. Cool. Cool. Um, what else have you found out that you'd like to share with everyone? See, the thing here is there's these minimum trades as well over at OTCs. Mm -hmm. All right. That's mm -hmm. because they can facilitate, they can facilitate trades for lar larger buyers. And so that's very valuable for institutional investors who need to meet certain requirements, compliance, security, and price when thinking about their trades. So, <laughs> Goldman Sachs, right, finds this, uh, um, th th this is something that they want to dabble in because they can facilitate these trades. Sure. Now, do they, do they offer XTZs? I'm not sure. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if they offer any type of trading pair for dollar to XTZ over there. But the minimum trade is $500,000. With Goldman? Yeah, 500000 And that's up from 100000 Okay. A year ago. And so, but the average trade on that OTC uh, trade desk, according to Business Insider, is a million dollars. All right. So it's definitely for whales. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Anybody else? Are they the only ones or are there others? A place up in Chicago, our OTC trade desk called Cumberland. Mm -hmm. um, and they, their minimum trade, so they're offering many different digital assets as well. But their minimum trade is 100,000. Okay. A hundred thousand. Now this is a, it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just the way that you look at this. Okay. It's just the way that you see it is what kind of player you are, what kind of investor you are will make the determines how you feel about these, these things. 
um, minimum support on the client side for those guys. And I am pretty sure that they do not offer an XTZ USD trading pair. Okay. All right. Right. So, you know, wrapping it, wrapping this up a little bit. So where top to bottom, where can you trade uh, Tezos for uh, on OTC desks? Where can you trade Tezos for U.S. dollars that you're aware of? I mean, there, there may be stuff we don't we aren't aware of, but w what are you aware of? Without dealing, without having to sell it for Bitcoin and to and 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 converting your Bitcoin or your Ethereum or whatever you sell it for into USD. If you want to avoid the exchange, uh, you know, exchange fees, blockchain fees, and the slippage that will most likely occur, then there is no, there's no place other than iBuyTezos.com to go liquid from, um, you know, your XTZ to cash. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just about it. Now, there are three exchanges that offer, you know, a Bitcoin, maybe a USD uh, Tether um, trading pair, but... You know, actually, I know them all. Hit, hit BC, but they're not offering withdrawals until mainnet. Uh, number two is gate.io. Very low volume there, and it's overseas. It's closed to U.S. investors. And number three, it would be um, Gatecoin, which is out of Hong Kong, but very low volume. Um, they accept, I think they accept investors or are, are residents from four U.S. states. Mm -hmm. Illinois is one of them. And uh, it's just very hard to get to get an account with them. And again, you're looking at only maybe sixty thousand dollars across all their digital assets, and there is no USD pair on any of those. Are there, is there Tether? <clears throat> there is Tether, but Tether's a cryptocurrency. Yeah. And then you got to still you've got to move the Tether out of Tether into cash. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And oh, and Bitcoin, like so, there's a Bitcoin ATM popping up everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Those are really cool. But so there's two here in town. All right. And they only offer, um, uh, so you, you can only sell or buy on any given day up to $900 worth. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Do they, what, do they like, uh, how do they identify you? Do they, do they, is it totally anonymous or do they use some kind of technology to, to identify who you are? Yeah, so um, you, most, you have to put in your phone number to receive a text message. Once you receive that text message or a code, once you put that code in, that's when you can fur go further with your transaction on the buy and the sell side. So what that does is it records your phone number. Your phone number is linked to a lot of different ways to identify you. And so in that sense, they're there because that, that, that's a requirement by local, by the local, uh, you know, authorities that they have to require, they have to do that because the, the local authorities need to be able to identify the people that are buying and selling assets of value. These are, these are pretty much currency. So um, it's, not out of the, it's not out of the purview of the law. All right. So to kind of wrap up, could you give me like, um, as a whale, what are the top two or three reasons why I should use OTC? Uh, let's start with that. Well, so again, depends on what, what, it depends on what, what you're trading. Well, I'm a whale. I got I got a million dollars. Why should I use Why should I use OTC? Well, if you, I'm crypto. Okay, so if you want to, uh, if you have a million dollars worth of Tezos, you want to sell. Okay. OTC like iBuyTezos.com mm -hmm. can facilitate such a trade, whereas you can't do that anywhere else. And uh -huh. also for small small individuals, so for small buyers who let's say Tezos ICO investors who want to liquidate say five thousand Tez right? And they want cash for it. The only place you can do that is, you know, a trade desk like iBuyTezos.com. Yeah. It, it can happen, right? So in, there's no other place where you can exchange your Tez for cash. So if you're one of those kind of individuals and you want to go from Tez to cash quickly, no matter how big or how small you are, you can do that at iBuyTezos.com. Cool. Cool. All right. Super. Uh, okay, Jovan, you have been super informative. I hope um, I, I hope that all of our listeners, our watch, our viewers have enjoyed this. Um, I know you you were talking to me earlier, but actually before we went live here, that there's a tremendous amount of nuance, um, and so obviously this in this discussion here, 
Uh, this is very high level bullet points. And, you know, with a few broad statements, we're trying to cover, you know, 100% of the market. And it's, it's really impossible to cover 100% of the market in a few broad statements. So um, because of the nuance, there is nuance and there are exceptions. And so what do, what do you, uh, you, you told me you were, had something up your sleeve uh, on, the, on that nuance for the future. So what you got cooking there? Yes, yeah, so just in subsequent, perhaps in subsequent videos as a follow-up to this discussion, we'll go, we'll, we'll look at those more, at those bullet points in more detail. Huh? All right, but however, what we want to do is we want to inform people how they can go liquid from, you know, cryptocurrencies to cash. What is involved, the kind of players that, the kind of players that uh, find OTC trading desk valuable and others and, 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 and those who kind of, don't need to use them at that at, 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 at this stage or at a certain stage in their in their trade investment and that's why we need to have follow-up videos for this stuff to explain all of that nuance because you know if you want to buy one bitcoin for example right mm -hmm. you can do that on exchange you know you're better off there on exchange but if you're a, if you're a larger player right you probably want to do that on an otc trade desk that way you don't move the price against you for a smaller buyer who wants to sell tez where can he buy it right. or where, where can he sell it um, do you and on top of that you're probably gonna want USD if you're selling Tez, right? And right. so Where where can you do that at and so the What what I designed today what I wanted to put together today is a broad spectrum of OTC and kind of some background behind OTC mm -hmm. and, um, In terms of Tezos Why it's probably a good idea or why it's useful to consider iBuyTezos.com as an exchange for either buying or selling large amounts of Tez or even small amounts, right? And hold on, I wanna say this before we end as well. Um, uh, when you wanna go to make a trade for XTZ to USD or Bitcoin. Final point, with these OTC trading desks, most of them have very high minimum buy-ins, okay? Yes. So again, over at, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, Circle by Goldman Sachs. 500,000 is the minimum trade for all mm -hmm. across all digital assets. Mm -hmm. At Cumberland, these are huge, these are huge organizations, right? At Cumberland, you're looking at about a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars for you know for all digital assets, minimum trade. Because Tezos is in a very unique stage in its development, okay. Uh, we 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 how should I say this? We want to encourage and support the Tezos ecosystem. By yep. getting Tez into people's hands, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because sure. these things, because right, and so our minimum buy-in at this point in time is five hundred bucks. I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five hundred dollars. Now that will increase over time. So come like maybe by the uh, December thirty-first or the first of the year, mm -hmm. that's gonna, that's most likely going to increase because sure. that's just a fact with uh, with these kind of trade desks, and that's fine. But in the early days, because we're in this, uh, because we're in this unique stage, we would like to support and encourage more people to get their hands on Tezos. And so the minimum buy-in is 500 bucks and you just can't beat that. Very cool, very cool. All right, Javon, you've been super helpful. And um, until next time, over and out, we'll see you later. It gave us the governance, and got rid of the stubbornness, stubbornness. Like split a community, turning the shit into multiple governments multiple gov It can formally verify, formally verify. any code you can dig about any code. Any code. See a bug, any take code. it down hey. When it comes to the code, code. yeah, the fight be bout for bout Says those called a winning came about, now they wanna know when the token now when that We'll token never know grandma's recipe. Grandma recipe, grandma's recipe, that recipe. grandma rest in peace oh. Now if you bacon, keep bacon, can't run to no, don't trip, you mistaken. They thought that we was fried up, but now we baking the bacon. Tesla's is coming, promoting and popping that decentralization. Pump it.